I have been using forward change to keep a track of all my expenses. And while going through these expenses, I realized that I have been paying 10 bucks a month to Hetzner, which is fine if I was actually making use of it. I do run an edit and instance, which has a couple of workflows, but those workflows don't justify the cost. Lucky for me, I also have a Raspberry Pi 4 lying around. Hi everyone, my name is Harshil Agrawal and in this video, I am going to take you step by step on how I installed Anytan on my Raspberry Pi. There are two parts in this video. The first is installing and running Anytan locally on Raspberry Pi and the second part is making your Anytan instance global. What does that mean? Well. You might want to run an edit and workflow that gets triggered by an external activity. For example, you send a message on Telegram or do or through a Slack activity. Now, if your edit and instance is running locally on Raspberry Pi, it does not really have access to the outside world. Anyone within your local network can access it, but services that are running on the internet like Slack or Telegram cannot really access it. And to change that, we're going to use something called Cloudflare Tunnels. In the first part of the video, we are going to look into installing and configuring uh, Cloudflare Tunnels for your Raspberry Pi. And in the second part, we are going to learn how to run an attend on our Raspberry Pi, but make it accessible on the internet. So let's dive into it. The first thing that you want is to have a Cloudflare account and a domain configured with that. Well. I use Cloudflare every day, so I have that configured for myself. The next thing you want to do is configure Zero Trust inside of Cloudflare. Once you log into Cloudflare, you can navigate to Zero Trust or from the dashboard. If you are using Zero Trust for the first time, you would have to go through a configuration process, but that's quite simple. And a good thing is you can use Zero Trust for free. Now that I am on my Zero Trust dashboard, I'm going to go to Networks and click on Tunnels. I'm going to add a new tunnel and I am going to select the CloudFed uh, method over here. I'm going to give it a name, Video Tunnel for now, save this tunnel and it is going to take us to the next steps, which is running this command. But if I try running this command right now, it is not going to work for us because we haven't installed Cloudflare on our Raspberry Pi. So let's do that now. Now I am accessing my Raspberry Pi through SSH, but if you want, you can do this natively on your Raspberry Pi terminal. And don't worry if you are new to the Raspberry Pi ecosystem or are not sure how do you SSH into your Raspberry Pi, I am going to add a link to the blog post in the description, which will walk you through the steps of installing RPI OS to helping you access your RPI through SSH. Now coming back to Cloudflare, there are a couple of commands that we need to run. The first is going to be the make directory command and next we are going to run a cull command. Now these two commands basically add Cloudflare's GPG keys, which is used to verify the authenticity of the packages. Next, we need to add a Cloudflare repository to our systems package list. So we're going to execute the command and then run the sudo apt update command. Now we are going to run the install command to install Cloudflare. Now this might take a couple of minutes. I'm going to time travel to the future. Well, we now have Cloudflare installed on our Raspberry Pi. So we can go back to our dashboard and run the command. One important thing to note over here is that your tunnel is going to have a token. This token should be kept as a secret. So make sure you don't share this token with anyone. Once this command runs successfully, we can head back to our dashboard. We can see we have a Raspberry Pi connected to our cloud tunnel. The next step is to click on next and set up a subdomain. For this video, I'm going to have an end running on the subdomain and attend with my personal domain that's herschel.dev. You can also configure a path if you want to, but that's completely optional. The next step is to set up the service. 
This is basically the URL where your anodyne is running locally. For me, this is going to be on localhost 5678. And this is going to successfully set up the DNS for us. And as we can see, it has configured the domain for our service. If I try to navigate to this, it is going to run into an error. The reason being that Anitan is not running on our Raspberry Pi yet. Well, in the next part of the video, we are going to run Anitan on our Raspberry Pi. Now to run the Anitan instance on Raspberry Pi, I am going to use Docker. But you can also run Anitan using PM2. Well, if you decide to follow along and use Docker, make sure that you have Docker and Docker Compose installed on your Raspberry Pi. Once you have that, we will first create an Anitan directory. And now we get into that directory. In this directory, we will create an .env file. This file is going to contain the configurations for our Anitan instance. These are the configurations that I need for my Anitan instance. So for Anitan host, make sure you use the domain uh, where you want your Anitan instance to be available. Next, the protocol should be HTTPS. Make sure you also enable runners. For myself, I have set personalization to false. You can, uh, you can omit this if you want. By default, it is true. And I'm also setting up my generic time zone. I have saved that file. And the next file that we want to create is a Docker Compose file. The Docker Compose file is going to define an edit and service with a couple of configurations and the volume as well. Now that we have both the files configured, we can start up our edit and instance using the Docker Compose up command. Now this is going to download the edit and image. So it might take a few minutes. Uh, for that, I am going to again time travel to the future. Now we have our Anitan instance running. Let's take the look at the logs to make sure that everything is working fine. So if we go to Docker Compose logs, we see that there is an error and that our Anitan did not really run successfully. But we can fix this. Uh, the first thing is to make sure that we stop our Anitan instance. So use the command docker compose stop. This is going to stop our Anitan instance. Next, we are going to run the chon command. Uh, this command is going to give our node user in that container access to the volume. Now that the correct permissions are set, we can now start the uh, Anitan instance using the docker compose start command. We see that our Anitan instance has started successfully. We'll take a look again at the logs just to make sure. All right. We see a message that it is running a migration, which is good. We can also check out for further logs. It is still running the migrations. It is registered our uh, runner that we configured earlier. And as we can see, it has now successfully completed all the startup tasks and it is now available on our domain. Now let's head on to this domain. Now in a browser, I'm just going to refresh this page again because this is where we were running Anitan and we have our Anitan up and running. I can now go through the uh, setup process. Again, I'm just going to put in some dummy uh, email address. And click on next and we have now ended and up and running. You can now go ahead and build a workflow from scratch, test a sample AI agent example, or get some inspiration from the thousands of templates that are available on the Anitan's website. All right. So let's do a quick recap of what we learned so far. First thing we did was set up Cloudflare tunnel. Cloudflare tunnels make your application securely available on the internet. So if you are running an application on a Raspberry Pi or maybe on a private server, you can use Cloudflare Tunnel to make it accessible. Now, sometimes you might want to protect this exposed application. You don't want other people to access it, but you still want it running on the internet. Well, in the next video, I am going to cover just that. But 
In this video, again, we set up Cloudflare tunnels to make our Anaten instance accessible on the internet. I can now go to anaten.hershel.dev and access Anaten with my credentials. We also learned how to set up Anaten on a Raspberry Pi. You can now use Anaten for free and prototype any of the automations that I want. I would be curious to know how you are using Cloudflare tunnels to expose maybe any other application. Also, being an automation nerd, I would love to know what kind of automations you are running with or without an attend.